Hello and welcome to the Texas Association of Builders new virtual education session. The goal of TAB's education series is to offer an opportunity for you to gain new strategies and stay on top of the latest within our industry. Today's session is brought to you by Anderson Windows and Doors. And now for a few words from our sponsor. Hello, I'm Tasha with Anderson Windows and Doors, based in Dallas and lead our local and regional marketing across the country. Of course, Texas is a big focus for us and we have a manufacturing facility right here in Garland with numerous dealers across the region. We appreciate TAB and the partnership here in our great state and are really excited to sponsor today's event. Enjoy. and Anderson Windows and Doors. We appreciate your support. Today's session, we'll hear from two husband and wife teams, Deborah and Carlton Edwards and Lindsay and John McKinney. Each team have different approaches to how they conduct their business and how they find a balance in their lives. So if you welcome uh, both of teams. First, we will hear from Lindsay and John and their structure of their business and how insight into their operations. Then Deborah and Carlton will take us through how they operate. We will have questions at the end if anybody has any and uh, welcome. Thanks. Uh, well, I'm John and this is Lindsay um, and we uh, have our company here in Tyler, Texas. Uh, we've been uh, in the custom home building business now for almost 10 years um, and uh, been uh, really grown our company in the past 10 years and done really well and uh, started out, uh, like I said, in 2012. Um, I uh, uh, <clears throat> originally was uh, worked for two different large home builders uh, companies in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and eventually moved back home here to Tyler to start this company uh, with Lindsay. Um, that's a little bit about, uh, about us, uh, where we're at to this point. Um, and, um, uh, that's, oh, unless Lindsay has anything else to add about that. Not really. <laughs> we, um, we just have different roles in our organization. Um, I keep the office organized and on task. Um, I keep the clients informed on selections and help communicate that to our vendors. Um, I narrow down the designs. Um, and we have an online platform that um, we use and I manage. And then John is the project manager. Yep, I generally project manage, project manage all the custom projects that we have here. Um, uh, and then I also manage the uh, any of our other staff. We have a couple of superintendents that work for us, uh, that work for our, uh, our speculative products and other things. And obviously uh, I research and develop future property purchases or building, building projects we have going on in the future. That's a little bit about us. Carlton and Deborah. All right. We're a little more technology challenged than John and Lindsay, so bear with us on the Zoom business. But uh, we are a 
one-off custom home builder that uh, we design and build and primarily uh, much different than the, the spec builder that we build on people's property normally uh, where they'll have acreage out in the country and so forth. Um, our company is based here in uh, Bullard, Texas, which is just outside of Tyler. And uh, we've had the business in place for 16 years now. And Deb and I, we've been married 40 years and we built our first home in 2003. And I was in financial services at that time and we would build on the side. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in uh, 2006, we went into business full time mm -hmm. and have been doing so ever since. I've been very blessed. Uh, kind of like John and Lindsay, uh, we, uh, I take care of the project management side of the business, the design and build. Deb uh, started out with bookkeeping and has evolved into the interior design aspect of it. And thank God for that because I like to be free to of that. And she does an outstanding job and uh, just let her share. Well, like Lindsay shared that she keeps everything very organized. This is Mr. Organization. His ducks are in a row. I, on the other hand, have never even met my ducks. I don't know where my ducks are. I'm uber creative. And if you walk into my office, there's all kinds of paint swatches and fabric and stuff. But I, I, I accomplished the task. But I would not, you could never accuse me of being organized. But I'm real grateful he is. He's organized. His office is, I don't know how he does what he does. And his office looks like it's not worked in. But, you know, opposites attract. So that's us. We'll pass it back to you guys. Okay. So you talked a little bit about why you decided or why you decided to work together. Um, how did that come about? Why, you know, do you feel like that's really worked for you? And you have, you're still married. <laughs> uh, are we still on Deb and I? You guys I, can I, start and then... You can go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, the way it kind of started out was I was just really born with being acclimated to want to build homes and started designing when I was 20 years old, got homes in Fort Worth that were designed and, and built by us. And as we've moved around with my career to East Texas and out in Arizona for six years and then down in the hill country, uh, it was just always in me. And so we raised three daughters that we had to get educated. Mm -hmm. I always jokingly say, but we uh, got to a point with uh, the youngest daughter who graduated from college uh, in 05 to where we could uh, retire from financial services and take the risk associated with starting your own business. And uh, when we went into it, we were uh, you know, just starting from scratch you know, there was the first couple of years we didn't build, but about two or three custom mm -hmm. homes those first couple of years. Mm -hmm. And uh, about, I'm going to, I'm guessing timeline, it was about the third year that uh, Deb had always been a homemaker, by the way, by choice, and never had any aspirations to have a what we'd consider a professional career. Our profession was taking care of the home. But we reached a place, um, timeline wise, about that third year that. Uh, we were blessed that we started getting more and more homes to build, and we got to the place where I either was going to have to hire a superintendent at that time or Deb step up and take on some of it because I, there was not enough hours for me to manage. Uh, I believe it was five homes we had going at that time. And so we had a little widow lady that we were building her a, a little custom home in town, and uh Timing wise, it worked out. Deb just hit it off with her and she actually came out of the homemaker mode and stepped up and really oversaw building that whole home. And uh, in doing so, realized how she was more acclimated for it than she had ever dreamed and really enjoyed working with people and with our trades and our vendors. And so she has been actively involved ever since. And that's kind of how we got started. It was never set down like we planned it or designed it that way. It just kind of evolved. Mm -hmm. and yeah, that's right. I was really happy just doing the books and uh, just doing what I'd always done just in my little box. And I, I, I was more surprised than anyone. I loved 
getting inside my client's head and figuring out what she'd love and, and just guiding her through her selections. And I, so it's just been great and uh, a big surprise to me. And together we made a pretty good team. And, and still married. And still married. <laughs> and we're still friends. That's a big one. Well, I think um, for us, I mean, we, I guess, uh, it's not too off of what they just described. Um, we, I uh, obviously started the business uh, originally myself and with Lindsay's plans to really just stay home with the, our kids and um, in, in, the, in the event that, uh, you know, we, the, the business was growing, we had, I had m more than enough work and kind of like Carlton was saying, got to a point where uh, you kind of keep trying to keep your head above water and needing some help. And I think your, your spouse probably sees that probably better than anybody because she's there, they're seeing you at night and uh, how stressed you are or how uh, about things. And so um, I think through that, you know, after a few years being in business and us, us growing like that, um, I, I, I kind of expressed my desire uh, to her to help, to start helping some and, um, and honestly, Lindsay had the desire to help. She wanted to, she wanted to be more involved. Um, she obviously enjoys being a mother and, and, and taking care of our kids at home and, and doing that, that role as well. But um, I think there was still a desire for her to be involved uh, in more of a quote unquote professional world mm -hmm. uh, type mm -hmm. job. And so I think I, I simply asked her to get, in, get involved. And I think at the same time she wanted to get involved. So it just kind of worked out that way. Um, but we, uh, and, the, and those, and, and, you know, her, our roles and responsibilities, her roles and responsibilities have, have evolved over the years. I mean, we, at first it was just like, I just need your help with whatever you can help me with. And then, uh, and then, um, kind of has evolved into, into different things over the years, but, um, that's kind of how it all started for us anyway, as far as how, how we ended up working together more and more over the years. Yeah, I did not have um, any type of background at all in the building industry. I was actually in oil and gas before we had children. So I was in that world. And then we had our first kid and I um, decided to stay home. And John decided to start his business all in the same year. <laughs> so that was fun and an adventure. But um, yeah, so we quit jobs, started a business. And um, yeah, just like John said, over... I guess a couple of years. Yeah, probably two or three years. Yeah. yeah, just he started asking for my opinion. Clients started asking for my opinion. I just kind of, I I had a desire to be creative and to use my brain and and contribute um, and help my husband. And now it's not just his company; it's our company, and that's that's mm -hmm. been really fun. For sure. So, John and Lindsay, what are some challenges that you have faced and overcome? Um, for me anyway, I'm kind of, it kind of goes, I, I, Lindsay is, is, uh, I guess probably in, in Carlton's personality more of being the organizer and being the, uh, time management person. Lindsay has helped me, uh, overcome a lot of my time management and organizational skills. Um, going back to what I was talking about earlier, where I was like, I felt like I was drowning and, and had too many jobs and things like that. I think probably a lot of that was because of my time management skills were not real good. Um, and they're still not great, but at least she keeps me in line on some of that stuff still even today. It helps me with that. Um, so that was definitely some challenges that I had to overcome. Um, uh, you know, uh, we had to overcome being an, un, you know, uh, we had to overcome and I think, uh, you know, the, of being an unknown entity, you know, we had to be an unknown, we, nobody knew who we were here in town and in our town and in, in our local community is so much is, is word of mouth. Um, word, word of mouth is huge. And, and I think Carlton and, and Debbie would probably say, say the same thing. I mean, it's, that's probably the most important marketing tool that we have in our area anyway, is word of mouth. And, um, and so that was, that was a barrier that we definitely had to overcome as we grew. Um, and, uh, and so those are some things we had to overcome as, as a company here. Um, and, um, and, you know, and being, being, being a husband and wife and being in the business together, I'd say one of the biggest things too, is what we both agree on is, is we, you have to try not to talk about work all the time. 
Uh, it's, it's a challenge not to do that. Um, and, and, and I think it's important to not do that, uh, but it, it certainly is a challenge not to do that for sure. Mm -hmm. That's definitely something that is, that's difficult to do. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like too, um, when something goes wrong on a job site, it's kind of a challenge to work through it professionally because I know that there's been some times when something has happened and we're, and John and I are great about this in our relationship and marriage, but we'll fight. So we've been fighting on a job site and literally we look up and like, everybody's gone. <laughs> like all the drinks have left. And we're like, what's wrong? You all ready to go to lunch? Like, you know, we fought about it and it's over. And so just working through, especially at the beginning of us working through, or working together, just working through, you know, the disagreements that you're going to have in a business on top of, you know, the emotional aspect of the disagreements you have on a relationship level. And so just working through that professionally when you're in a professional setting. Um, and then we also know that work problems, you know, don't shake our relationship. It's just business decisions that we work through together. And so, so that's kind of been a challenge, but something that's been a blessing to both our business and our relationship is working through those business decisions together. Um, and it's grown our business and our marriage. Carlton and Deb. Well, it's kind of funny. We keep going back and forth, but what John and Lindsay just shared was pretty much what we had kind of thought about with, with this is uh, it's easy to let the business overwhelm you. And the thing that we found early on, and this is me more so than Deb, not her. She, Way more him. Yeah. But that my entire conversation was at a point, it was nothing but business. We could be going into church, coming out of church, and something would come up in my mind, and I'd start talking about a job going on. Uh, it could be on vacation. It could be anything. And she really, I would say, brought it to my attention or in another way harped on me that uh, I needed to get a handle on it. And she was absolutely right. And with time, uh, we do a much better job of attempting to turn work off at the end of the day and not discuss it, talk about it until we start back the next day or the next work day. And uh, I, I would say that we've we've succeeded at that and mm -hmm. not al allowing it to just consume us. But I do have to tell you, it's still funny that we can go on a trip to, to Red River, New Mexico, Silverton, Colorado, anywhere, and we find ourselves, and this is mutual, Yes. If we see new construction going on, oh, we're going in. We have to go in and look oh, yeah. and see what's going on, what they're doing in that geographical area. So we're not a hundred percent off not being consumed with it, but at least we do monitor our conversation much better today. I would say that we uh, learned this that our business was going to run us, or we were going to run our business. And the first few years, our business ran us, and it it overtook. And it's, it's good. We just learn to draw boundaries. And in every area of our life, boundaries are healthy and wonderful and they're a safety. And so now we run our business and man, life is better. Right. And I noticed uh, Lindsay mentioning they have gotten into discussions on jobs. We, we try to avoid that. We, we do our discussions, unfortunately, in front of our superintendent. He catches yes, a lot God of that. Bless, <laughs> bless his heart. <laughs> we try to minimize that if we can. Yes. Um, so can you share some joys of working together, how you've helped clients build their dream homes, maybe have some examples or stories to share? Who is, who is she talking to? Who do you want to go first? You can, Carlton. Well, you know, probably one of the most fulfilling aspects of being a custom home builder is Carlton being a designer. You know, we've had couples walk into the office that literally have a concept on a Kleenex. And if we begin talking to them and, and finding out their priorities and, and um, to see a concept on a Kleenex turn into the dream home that they're getting to move in, that they're going to make memories and, and that house is going to be able to tell so many wonderful stories. I mean, 
that's probably the most fulfilling thing that as a team, we get to see it from the very inception all the way down that they're moving in. And, and you know, you become friends. It's, it's an emotional thing. I mean, the reality of building a custom home, it's emotional and you become really good. Well, in a perfect world, we, we aim to end as friends and we're very blessed that we just end up they're parts of our family and we know their kids and their birthdays. And that's just a joy of building, but of being able to do it together. That When we come in at night and, and have dinner, we're on that same page about our clients. I'm not talking to him about being an accountant and he's, you know, talking to me about construction. We're sharing it together. We know these clients. We've gotten to know these clients and they've become like family. And so that's a really cool benefit and blessing of the joy of working together. And I, I agree with everything she just said. You know, I think the most fulfilling or most enjoyment is the fact that you can start with a couple's dream about their home and assist them in bringing it to pass. Uh, and, and it's, it's pretty incredible and, and very fulfilling to be able to do that. And so I would say that's probably the most enjoyable part about it. Well, um, from our perspective, I mean, like, obviously I would, I think we both echo everything that they just said for sure. Just like, I mean, building custom home is, is a one, it should be a wonderful experience and, um, and emotional for sure. Um, as far as joys, you know, for us working together on, on these things for these people. Um, I just enjoy watching Lindsay, Lindsay do things that I, that I'm not good at <laughs> and working with these people. And then I, and, you know, that's, that's one thing I enjoy is, is that, man, I'm, how awesome it is that I have somebody here that works with me. That's part of my partner that can, they can bring a softer side to the business that I can't always bring. Um, she can make it fun and exciting for these clients. And they, 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 <laughs> they get excited. They get excited about going and picking out doorknobs or something, you know, and I'm like, you know, for me, it's just a doorknob, you know? And so, <laughs> so, so she can create that for them that, I, that I'm always not as, as good at, at doing. Um, and obviously, I mean, you know, with her, with her being my wife, I mean, it's just somebody that you can completely trust and, and that I can completely depend on and is invaluable. That's you can't put a price on that, you know, and so I think that's that's definitely makes one some joys for me to be able to work with her. I think for me too, like I now truly understand um, more of the ins and outs of his day. I'm always surprised when I talk to friends who don't really understand like what their spouse does or um, can't understand why they're frustrated with things going on at work and they don't really communicate about work because we have to work to not communicate about work because we're always communicating about work. But I really, um, you know, every once in a while he'll get pulled off, you know, during the weekends or at night or he'll get a phone call and all he has to say is a certain client's name or a certain, you know, job. And I immediately know and I don't have to ask you know, all these questions or get frustrated that he's having to right. stay on the phone for a long time in the middle of a birthday party or something. Because I, I truly know what's going on with him um, day in and day out. And that's been a, a big joy and a big blessing for us is that I don't get as frustrated <laughs> with myself. Yes. So. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. <clears throat> Can I share one more thing real quick? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm real glad John and Lindsay are involved with this because every time they say something, it triggers another thought. But that, you know, it, as far as enjoyment, I get a kick out of Deb. She still makes me laugh after 40 years that uh, her personality, we, we have clients and, you know, clients have a tendency to overwhelm themselves with decisions and the process of building and I don't know how many times we've had a client that was having a meltdown. They thought the sky was falling and it was because they couldn't decide whether to put this color with that color or whatever. Something in my world seems very simple and no big deal. But Deb can take that client and just knowing how to talk to them, how to communicate with them, turn them around, have them laughing about it and on back on top of the world after they thought their world was ending. 
You know, it's just, and it, to watch her do that and just observe that, that brings me a lot of enjoyment. And uh, that, I just wanted to share that. Thank you. <laughs> Very much. Um, so what advice do you guys have for other husband and wife teams that are starting out? Maybe they're in the home building industry. Maybe they're doing something else. They're trying to find that balance. Like, do you actually make a spreadsheet or like, is it all about talking? Is there some magic <laughs> formula that you could share? Is it us? Who do you want to go next? Who, who has the most advice? <laughs> well, but let me, let me get my short advice over is, you know, with us, you're talking about a spreadsheet or sitting down or, you know, having a list of advice. Honestly, ours is kind of evolved by osmosis. Uh, you know, I, I think that for us, I would say the best thing you can do if you're going to work with your spouse is recognize what each other's strengths are and let that spouse run with their strengths and stay out of their way and it's vice versa. And that way we benefit and uh, take advantage of those opportunities. And where you really get crossed up is like, for instance, if Deb has got it going on with the interior design, if I try to get in the middle of it, it's gonna be a train wreck. It's bad. But we've also had the other side where she drives up to a home that I've designed and says, oh my Lord, what were you thinking with that dormer? And this is the Guilty. worst, you know, Guilty. worst thing I've ever seen. And then when it's all settled, she goes, I can't believe it looks so good, you know, and it's, it works both ways. So I, I think, you know, advice from me anyway, would be to recognize each other's strengths and, and let that individual run with the strengths that they bring to the table. And that's where you're going to have the greatest success. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and just say this. I've said this in, uh, I think John and Lindsay and Carlton and I were interviewed a few years ago, and I've said this, a good sense of humor goes a long way. It's a really important thing to say, lighten up. Sometimes you need to say it to yourself. Sometimes you need to say it to your partner. In our case, I say it to him a little bit more. In a good sense of humor, because this is something we see a lot. This too shall pass. Uh, pick your battles. Don't, don't, don't overreact about every little thing you know we've got a lot of age on us so we've got we kind of got it down on not the overreacting and when I pull up to a job site now and I think he has screwed it all up with the dormer I'm a little bit uh more diplomatic than I used to be but I would give the advice of stay in your lane and find things to celebrate you know a big thing for me is when I have a, a client and it's taken them seven trips to the flooring and three hours each trip, this kind of stuff, you know, I come in and we celebrate that she chose. She picked it out. I mean, find things to celebrate and, and just don't, don't uh, fight every little bit, pick the battles because they're going to be battles, aren't there? Mm -hmm. So. Definitely. Definitely. Um, well, my, I was going to say, and I think it probably ties in what they just said, but I think I think you need to clearly define what those strengths and weaknesses are. Uh, clearly define the roles and responsibilities of your spouse. Um, and, and and for us, I mean that is that is evolved. I mean that is not that is it has taken us several years to figure out what those are. I mean, um, and, and and it's still something we're figuring out. I mean, it's not, we still find things every day that we're like, you know what, I'm not as good as that as I thought I was, and you're better at that, and you need to be handling that, you know? And you've, you've got to have that open communication to, to determine what those things are and, and stick to those things. Like I mean, y'all just said, I mean, stay in your lane. I mean, that's that's def definitely definitely good advice. And, um, and uh, I, I will say to that, stay in your lane, but also be open open to open to to, to to criticism or say not criticism but just critiquing yeah critiquing yeah. There you expanding go. your horizon be okay yeah if if your spouse says on you but but uh you know but have you know you have a um, a good communication that you can that you can get through through some of those discussions um that um but definitely define those roles and responsibilities at work and and you know wear that hat when you're at work but then when you're at home we're not you know 
I don't have those, you know, I'm not wearing that hat at house. At home, at home I'm a dad and I'm a husband. And yeah. I'm not, you know, we are not the boss at home. I'm not, I'm not, well, I'm not the pride, you know, we, we, we try to wear those different hats at different times. And I would just encourage, that's one thing I would encourage you to do is try to really remove, take those hats off when you get home and put the hats on when you're at work, you know, do those correct that's hats. Good. And communication, I feel like is key. Um, just talking directly to each other, you know, kind of echoing what all of y'all are saying, whether it's um, a disagreement or um, something to celebrate. I think just being direct with what you're communicating in business mm -hmm. and in a relationship um, is key. Yeah, I really yes. like what Deborah said earlier yeah. about picking things to celebrate. And that, because that's something I just thought about that we need to do more. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would be something that we need yeah. to do more of. So I think that's definitely good advice. Thanks, Deb. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so I know you guys both have a little bit different um, ways to tack ta tackle uh, project management. So Deb and Carlton, how do you guys manage your projects? With well, your, your breakfast meetings? I <laughs> yes, yes. yes, we're old school. We're very old school uh, because we don't have the volume that, say, John and Lindsay or some other builders do. Uh, it affords us the opportunity to be much more hands on. But what you're talking about, mm -hmm. that we've visited about before, is we start out, and, and this is always exceptions based on what our schedule is for that day. You know, like if we've got a day where we're meeting the concrete pour at uh, six o'clock in the morning, then we don't get to have that breakfast meeting. But a day-to-day a -day basis, we try to start out with a breakfast meeting with our uh, superintendent and the three of us. It just starts by saying, hey, what do you got on your calendar for today? And we kind of talk about it. And I would say probably 90% of the time uh, we go with what each one brings to the table. But there's that opportunity when there might be something that is a priority or something comes up that changes that a little bit, alters that. And so it gives us an opportunity to communicate, stay in the loop on everything. And then uh, our commitment to our clients, uh, we used to use the terminology that we are on the job site every day. And that used to be true when we were uh, actually accomplishing something every day. We could build a home in four months. And now that we have the labor issues, material issues, uh, unfortunately, we do have some idle days on these jobs that we didn't used to a few years back. And so our commitment to our clients today is we will be on your job every day that there is activity on that job. Mm -hmm. And so as far as the project management aspect of it, our theory is, is that we're working with human beings. And as long as human beings are involved in the process, there's an opportunity for human error. And so if you're on that job every day, there's a greater opportunity to catch an error yes. and get it turned around. And it's uh, easier to turn it around and it's more cost effective the sooner that you catch it. So I don't know if that's exactly what you were asking for, but that's when I say project management, that's kind of what comes to my mind. Definitely. Now, John and Lindsay, you guys utilize a computer software? Yeah, so <clears throat> we definitely still, um, uh, we don't have anything uh, like a like a like what Carlton was talking about, like a breakfast meeting or anything like that. We do, but as far as like from on a day to day communication, <clears throat> excuse me, we do use an online based program to organize our jobs with all the the job files and also communicate uh, with our clients and within and in our office. Uh, it, that's that's that we utilize every day that 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 we love, and I think a part of that is is one reason we went to doing that honestly is uh, not so much just because we like technology so much, which we do, but it's just w with some of the volume that we started creating, um, do, do, you, you really need something like that to help organize those jobs a little bit, you know, when, when you've got that many projects going on at once. Um, and so that's really helped us uh, 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 do that and it, and it helps there, there's multiple reasons we went to that, but that's that, but that's what we utilize and what we like, what, what we like to use. But you know, like I said, there's much, lots of different ways to to do that. I think we have some 
questions we can um, go through. So one of our questions from our audience is, do you have any other family members in your business? And if so, how does that change the dynamic? Uh, I can roll with that real quick is we have one superintendent, which happens to be our son-in-law. And I always tell my clients that he's our superintendent because he's the best I know of just happens to be married to our youngest daughter. And uh, so the, uh, our experience with Tim, he's been with us six and a half years now. And uh, the young man continuously exceeds my expectations. And I tell folks, I have three son-in-laws and my Bible tells me that I love them all unconditionally, but I've got two of them that we couldn't work together five minutes. And <laughs> Tim and us, we've survived, like I say, all ago I made a point. We were talking about you can get in a disagreement or a little heated argument. And, Poor Tim. You know, sometimes in front of the trades or the vendors, but unfortunately Tim catches most of that stuff and he still shows up for work and every still, day. He still loves us. <laughs> So that's when you know it's God's will. <laughs> but but it has been an, an outstanding experience for us. And so our company is basically the three of us, Deb and I and Tim. And uh, it's just, it's been a good experience for us. Well, for us, uh, our kids are eight, six, and four. So we don't have any, we aren't quite there yet. Maybe, no, you're not. <laughs> maybe, maybe uh but, but I do, uh, but yeah, I mean, so currently it is just me and Lindsay. We don't have any other family members involved in our business currently, but I would anticipate we'll probably get a couple of my, two, you know, my boys out there on a job site one of these days. So. Caroline, she's the four-year-old. She likes to decorate. She decorates. Oh, good. So that's so where, one day. So, so currently no, but maybe, maybe we have some aspirations there to get them out there one day. You got some in training. Yeah. There you go. There you go. So if you ever had a first meeting with a client and you can clearly see that you're not going to be able to work together, do you say no? Or have you ever turned down a client? I think uh, Deb's got one. <laughs> or John. <yeah. laughs> well, quickly, we have had probably, like I say, Deb and I built our first house together in 1983. Oh, and, and I would say there are that comes to mind, there have been three clients mm -hmm. that I have had to tell them. And, and the expression I always use is, I believe you would be much happier working with someone else than myself. Mm -hmm. And when I knew I made the right decision on one of them, the gentleman said, was it my wife? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no, let's say it was me that I just feel like I'm not a good fit for you guys. But, but we have had three that come to mind that we have had to turn down. There was one in particular that Carlton wouldn't tell. us. He's not nearly as transparent as me. And uh, Carlton just, we had this first meeting and Carlton said, Deb, I just have a red flag. I said, oh, I do too. So we were going to email, call him the next day. But the next morning at seven o'clock, the, the prospective client was beaten on our front door because he had been emailing or texting since 5 a.m. And when we didn't answer, he was beating on our front door. And so that was a good sign that, that wasn't, we weren't going to take that job. So that's kind of funny, but horrible at the same time. Yeah, we, we, we've definitely had a few of those over the years um, that, uh, that, that for sure I have. And, and I think Carlton put it as best as you can. I probably I'm sure I've used the same verbiage. Is that you know? Hey, I think you know you're after looking at your project and kind of talking to you. I really feel like you might be better served with another with another company or another person here in town to to help you accomplish this. And um, I, you know, we we try to be be as gentle as possible about that and try not to be disrespectful or anything like that. And I think most people, at least, I mean, in our experiences and the people that I've talked to, I mean, most people appreciate that. I mean, they they. Nobody usually gets their feelings hurt that I'm aware of anyway, <laughs> that they, they, they didn't tell me. Um, and most people are fairly understanding about that and probably respect you more for saying that up front instead of trying to force something that shouldn't happen. Um, be worse than before, you know, obviously. So that, but yeah, for sure. So we did have a question, uh, another question that 
I know Carlton, you already answered this, but maybe Lindsay and John, you have a different, um, you guys, Carlton, Deb, you guys build on your customers' lots or on their land primarily, but does anybody build any spec homes? Um, I'll answer that first. Yeah, we, we do have, a, we do build some spec homes um, uh, and we do a little bit of, I've done a little bit of development as well. Um, so I would say, yeah, we, we do speculative homes and, and majority of those homes, uh, I do have uh, a superintendent on staff that, that handles most of those for me um, as far as project management. Um, and anything that anyone brings us custom wise, if it's on their own, if it's on their own property or whatever, is something that that my, my that I myself would, would project manage, and that's kind of how we're set up. Okay. Uh, another question is, how do you handle difficult clients? Um, I mean, you've already uh, you've already dismissed the guy at seven a.m. that's banging on the door. So. John, if, the one John, that makes you it ever, through the door. <laughs> John, have you ever had a difficult client? <laughs> Never. 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 Well, it, Lindsay hit on something a while ago. She said that you can get a phone call and just hear the job name or the client name, and, man, you don't need to say anything else. And that sums it up. And, uh, but, you know, the, the best answer I can give you is just, you know, you have to keep business business. I, I try to be as diplomatic as possible, but I also, I, I'm one of those that I don't have a problem with confrontation and I don't have a problem with telling someone we're going to do what's right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I don't let feelings, me and Deborah opposite here, she wants everybody to love her. Uh, I figure if somebody loves me, that's a bonus. And, you know, if they don't, that's between them and God. But, <laughs> but I just, I, I kind of just got to say, I, I try to be diplomatic and, and as nice as I can be, but at the same time firm when there's a difficult situation that needs to be dealt with. And you're going to have difficult. There are some people that they're not even difficult until they're in a home building because it's an emotional yeah. It's one decision after another, and, and, and customs, John and Lindsay do customs just like us. Customs are, you've never done it before. It's never been done before. We're also figuring it out. It's emotional, and Carlton is amazing at, I don't know how he does it, but he just commands this respect and gets out there, and he just resolves it, and I look at him like, there's Jesus, and then there's Carlton, because I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like this. I'm like, oh my gosh, they're freaking emotional wrecks. And but this is what I have to dumb it down to this real simple. You know what? That's their demeanor. That's the personality they got dealt with. And they're difficult ones. I do the best I can to listen to understand. And when I get my understanding, I can deal with them. That's all I got to say. I, I, I'm, I'm going to be about as simple as you can be on this. I, I just, in every difficult situation that I have with, with customers or clients, um, I simply just, I mean, this is going to sound like a little kid, but I just think about the golden rule. And my, and that is simply, if, if I, I mean, if, that, if it were me, if, if I'm building this house and I'm a person that had never built a house before, um, you know, how would I want to be treated? I mean, yeah. if, if, if it were my house, how, how would, I got to put the other shoe on, right? Mm -hmm. So, and that's really difficult to do sometimes because I mean, like, I, I, I mean, you, <laughs> I mean, especially if you're in a situation where the person has been a really difficult customer the whole time and, and, mm -hmm. and they're asking for something or something happened on a job that just seems crazy and you don't want to do, and it's going to cost you money and you're frustrated. But at the end of the day, what, what would you, you know, it, what would you expect? You know, if, if it were your house, you never built a house. I mean, and I've, and I've done that since day one and it's never treated, it's never, it's never, as long as I have stuck to that, I have never had a problem. I mean, like, and beyond that, if, 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 if they still have, if, if they're still being difficult or asking for un, being unreasonable, I, I, I can sleep at night. Mm -hmm. 
because I know that that I, yeah. I feel like I've done the right thing. Um, and and that's and you, you sometimes and that's sometimes is, and that hasn't been easy because it's still not easy to sleep at night sometimes because mm-hmm. my personality is that I'm a major peacemaker. I, I Carlton says he does well with confrontation and I can do well with confrontation, but at the end of the day, I like people to like me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, I and, and and I don't want anybody, you know, to 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 think badly of our company or to think badly of us or Lindsay. Mm-hmm. And 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 but but at the end of the day, I again I just think of the golden rule on every single thing that I do in, in, in our company. And I try to live by that. I mean, and, and it serves, it really will serve you and your company well if you do the same thing. I mean, it's not, I think 99% of the time, you're going to be fine, you know, if, if you try to live by that. And the people in our office, they all know that John's a lot nicer than I am. <laughs> so what I really feel like John has taught me is that a lot of times people just want to be heard. Like they want to know that you're listening to them and that you hear them. And so... <laughs> I feel like that's something that I've really gotten from John is when we have a client upset or if I'm running a job and I have a client upset, like they just want to know that I hear them. Well, you have to care. I mean, like if you, if you are emitting a response or a personality or a communication that you don't care, it's not going to matter what it is. Those people are never going to like you <laughs> because it's exactly not, right. You, you, right. you, I mean, you, you've got to, I mean, you need to care like it was your own home. And, and, yes. um, and so that's, I've tried to stick to that. I don't always do it the best, but then I get, you know, guilty, but, um, but that's what I try to do. That's good advice. Mm-hmm. We'll start with Carlton on this one. Do you remember your worst or hardest build? Oh, dear God. Well, it's hard to choose sometimes. <laughs> uh, I think probably my most challenging was the family that I worked for. And the gentleman was like a Jekyll and Hyde that uh, I could go out there one day on the job and he was wanting to plan family vacations together, Deb and I and them. Yes. I could go out there another day and he could be cussing me up one side and down the other like I was trying to beat him out of something. And uh, that is far more challenging to me dealing with a personality like that than dealing with a structural or a uh, issue with the build itself. So I would say that probably uh, was my single most difficult. Uh, would have been that particular job. Deb, was that the same for you? Or do you have a memory um, of another build that was a there was another There was another build, and um, it, they were, uh, were also uh, pretty, um, I think that their emotions ruled them just in life. And so we're in the middle of a job. Well, I had ridden with Carlton. And uh, it was kind of a drive to get to the job site. It was out on a lot of land. And I looked up at one point and the client was running and flailing his hands and screaming all these obscenities at Carlton. It was real unrealistic. And I just remember thinking again, because I like everybody to be happy and let's just get along and be happy. And so Carlton got in the truck and I'm like, we're quitting this job. We're getting out of this job. There's there's no amount of money worth this. So anyway, Carlton's steadier than me. And he's like, you know what? We'll get through it tomorrow. He'll probably be fine. So anyway, that was just crazy stuff. Well, and, you know, here's the, the good news out of that is we both those jobs, we ended the jobs on excellent terms. Yes. Both families have invited us back to their home for a visit. Yes. Uh, I have received referrals from both families. Yes. So it ended up good, but it was one of those deals that if they call me tomorrow and said, hey, we're going to be doing a project, would like you to bid on it, I'm probably going to have too many jobs going to bid on it kind yes. of thing. Yes you and know? amen. So that's kind of our experience. John and Lindsay. Oh, same question for us. 
It doesn't have to be a difficult client. Did you have a difficult project or, or I can give you a different uh, question. We have lots. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, um, I mean, I've had a few, but you know, you just, <laughs> I think I, I laughed at Carlton's comment earlier about, you know, cause typically I, I can't, I can't think of anybody. I mean, I, I'm trying to sit here trying to think of anybody that I wouldn't be able to like call on the phone today and have a conversation with. And I can think of one, I can think of one person, you know, like that one client that I had. And um, so, I mean, to, to what Carlton was saying earlier, I mean, I could, it, it ended up okay, you know, in most of those situations. Um, uh, and, and, you know, we, we get along today to this day, but uh, I think that um, if they called me today wanting to do another project, I, I, might, <laughs> I might be a little busy, kind of like what you right. said. So I, I think I would just tell you, if you have a difficult customer like that, um, you know, it's, it's just, you know, typically I, I think you, you kind of just live to fight another day, uh, kind of like what happened in your situation that Deb was talking about with Carlton and that, that they'll, you know, you just, you, you push through and you finish. And at the end of the day, if you provide, the, if you provide the product that you told them you were going to provide in your mind and you've done what, you know, if, it, if you had done what you said, you felt like you said you were going to do and provide the product then at the end of the day, if they're still unhappy, that's, that's kind of on them, I guess. Yes, but, yes. Some of these difficult clients too have taught us to look for these red flags at the beginning of the process. Sure. Yes. To learn to say no in a kind and loving way to sure, people learn. who have come up to us wanting us to build and we see those red flags because there's been times that I've said yes to someone that looking back, there was lots of red flags and I should have, but now I know yeah. to look yes. for those red flags. Yes. To those red flags. Sure. It's just not worth it. Agreed. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Either of you built a parade of home or showcase home, and how is that different from your typical builds? If you have. You want to take that first, John? Go ahead. Go ahead. You go first. Well, you know, we, we hold ourselves out as custom builders because 99% of what we do is custom on the folks' land. But we started doing the parade of homes here in Tyler in 2009. And we learned that for a parade of homes, we do that one home each year as a spec home. Because when you are building custom homes, and, and John and Lindsay have probably experienced this, uh, a lot of times when you're doing a custom home, that homeowner selections are not what would necessarily appeal to the general public. Uh, you know, multiple odd room colors or just, you know, things that they do that that home is perfect for that custom homeowner, but it would not appeal to the general public possibly. So we learned to on the spec or on the parade each year, I'm sorry, that we do a spec because whether client or, or the lookers, whether they love that home or don't care for it, it is a reflection of who Deb and I are as builders because on the spec, we pick everything that goes into that home. Mm -hmm. So that's more of a true representation of who we are as home builders uh, than when we do a, which we've done a couple of customs in the parade, but we, we try to do a spec, we try to time it each year where we have a spec in there for that reason. And as far as what we do different, uh, the only thing that we might do different in a spec is we load it up with a lot of icing on the cake thing, mm -hmm. you know, with the uh, trick ceilings and, you know, accent walls and uh, maybe, uh, uh, you know, a floor tile or something that's a little pricey that we wouldn't typically do, but things to just give it a, uh, we call it a wow factor in the parade. So uh, that's kind of the, best thing I can tell you about our parade experience is we do that each year and half since 09 and believe it's a, a great opportunity here in the mm -hmm. Tyler market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'd probably echo everything he just said. The only thing uh, we, we do, we do parade home. We try to do one every year. Um, it, the, the way it here is in Tyler, it's not, I know it's different in different areas across the state the way you do parades, but 
you know, we do one parade every year and, and it's actually going on right now. And, and we, uh, and, and it's all over the community. I mean, it's all over our area. So, I mean, we could, they could be spread out 30 miles from each other. Um, whereas I know some, some other parades across the state are in one community, you know, and all, all together. Um, so that gives you the opportunity that gives more builders the opportunity to, to be in the parade of homes. Uh, and so, so it's really a big event for us around here because the community uh, enjoys it. Um, it's a big event. There's, we, we sell a ton of tickets and, um, and people in the community look forward to it every year. So as builders here in our community, it's, it's a, almost a no brainer to do one just simply because mm -hmm. for the cost and the exposure that you get um, it's from a marketing perspective is, is priceless. Um, so to that, we definitely do one every year. Um, I can probably, I, I agree with what they're saying about doing a speculative home. Cause usually when you do a spec more, a spec home, you know, just like they said, you can kind of put your own touches on it, put, put some icing on the cake and put put some uh, put some nicer things in it and so when we do that we certainly will do that i have a little bit different you know sometimes we will put a home in the in the parade of homes if if i've got uh, a community that i that i have several spec homes that are coming or in and i'm trying we're trying to highlight the community we'll definitely put yeah. a home in that in that area just to try to push people out there and to let them know that that's there and available um and so we, so we will put a little nicer things sometimes in those specs the customs that we have done uh, on the parade of homes, one thing we do is, is just if a customer comes in and, and wants to do that, because occasionally we will have custom homes and people will come and say, we want to be, a, we want you to build the home and we want to be on the parade of homes. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's a lot of communication that goes on about that up front uh, before we commit to that. Um, we really investigate what they're wanting before we say yes to that. We really yeah. investigate what they are wanting to build um, mm. what their styles are, um, we're, we're, we're obviously all about doing the things that are different sometimes, because sometimes that's good too on the parade is doing something just different, something, something that's not typical yes. yeah. and that's okay. As long as it's not just too out of this world. Uh, mm. so, um, we'll, 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 we'll certainly entertain that and that's, and that's what we'll do, uh, for customers, for customs as well. So, yeah. Um, Lindsay, we've had a couple questions about what software you guys use. Do you mind sharing the name of that or? Sure, we use we use CoConstruct. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's what we use, and um, it's been it's been really good. We we've, we've uh, there, there's a lot of pros and, and there's some cons to the program, but I mean I don't want to be a I want to like push one one or the other, but we've been really happy with that program mm -hmm. and went to we we went to actually. Uh, they're based out of Virginia and we actually went to Virginia and took some training and, and, and learned how to use the program really well. And it's, it's, it's been a really good, it's been a positive thing for us. Yeah. Okay. I have another question. Um, Can I inject yeah. one thing? Our okay. super, our superintendent dreams of us using software. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's on the days where you have those, uh, um, colorful breakfast meetings. <laughs> right, yes, right. yes. Right. Um, so uh, this question, I'm, whoever wants to answer this one, it says, I'm a builder. My spouse does not seem interested in working with me. How can I talk my spouse into doing this? <laughs> Take it. Talk about Pam and Ash. Well, our superintendent, who is, we've already told everyone that we love him. Uh, he's our, just happens to be our son-in-law. He has just in the last year formed his own LLC. And um, the goal is that we're going to retire and play one of these years. And he's going to just take it on his own. And he's in the situation. Our daughter doesn't care a flip. I mean, she doesn't care. It is the total opposite of us. And I, I personally don't know how you change some, I don't know how you change someone's interest. So maybe John and Lindsay have a lot more wisdom and can help us. Um, I mean, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I think, uh, I think you, you probably would need a little bit more information maybe to get, to get a, to get a real, to give you a really good answer on that. But I mean, I would tell you that 
I would not force it. I mean, like, it, you mm -mm. know, from a marital, I mean, mm -mm. Advice, but like, I wouldn't, I, I certainly wouldn't try to force your wife or yeah. your husband to, to get to be, to get involved if they, if they don't want to be. In fact, I would tell you the opposite, find out what they really are interested in. Maybe you get, maybe you become more involved with what they're interested in. <laughs> One thing for me too, though, like I was not in this world at all. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was very, like I said, oil and gas and then babies. And then I kind of fell into it because you started asking me questions. So mm -hmm. maybe if you have a desire to work with your spouse, just start asking them questions, ask for their opinions and kind of see where that leads. But like everyone's saying, don't force it. You can't force someone to love something, you know, not everybody yeah. is meant to work together, but just. Well, and I'll tell you too, I mean, if you do, if you, if you, if you push too hard and to where that they're going to feel like they're obligated to be involved, yeah. um, it's not going to be a good, it's not going to be good. I mean, you, you know, it, it's, it's not going to be a good experience for your, you y'all or your marriage or, or it won't be a benefit to your company um, um you, you're you know you uh, you you want so whoever is working with you whether it's your spouse or whoever you want them to want to work uh, you want them to want to work yet um and have a desire to be a part of a team and be a part of the you know a bigger picture and so i mean I mean, so, I mean, I don't want, I, sorry, that's probably not, this probably didn't help you a ton, but I mean, I just would encourage you to, uh, but there are, you know, to, to, act, to ask questions. I think Lindsay said it good, just ask them questions. What, you know, what different aspects that they you know, would be interested in, ask them questions about, about what, about the business side of things that they might be interested in, and maybe you can create an avenue there uh, for them to maybe be somewhat involved somehow. Um, I did get a request from the audience. Gary did not ask that question, just for clarification. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to Gary's wife. Um, I do have two more questions and then we'll need to wrap it up because we're at our hour. Um, how do you handle warranty issues that have been fixed by the customer, um, just keeps nitpicking um, for years after the build? Thank you. Uh, I, I'm sitting here and trying to think of a situation like that, and I, I can't think of one. Uh, you know, we obviously have warranty issues come up, or, you know, sometimes it's not even warranty, it's punch list kind of stuff. And we just, we have prided ourselves on very efficiently taking care of those in a very timely manner. And I'm sitting here searching my mind. I can't think of one that we've dealt with that has come back and been a problem in a later time. Mm -mm. Um, yeah. We just try to deal with it, fix it right first go round. And yeah. uh, I think, I think number one, the first thing you've got to do is, is when you, when, when you close on a home or when someone's being, I think you have to be extremely transparent of, of what, of what is covered. Um, yes. You, you need to make sure they have all the correct documentation um, and correct and, and, and have it all on paper that they, that they have the material that lays it out, that lays out what is war truly warranty and what it's not. Now, do we warranty things sometimes that are not technically black and white on that paper? Of course we do. I mean, like, again, it goes back, it goes back to, to the golden rule thing that I was talking about earlier. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, if I, if I really feel like it was something that we probably should take care of, we'll take care of it. I mean, it's not, it's not, you know, I'm not, I'm not so black and white with that kind of stuff that I'm just, you know, sorry if it's not on that paper i'm not doing it you know that's just, just yeah. it's probably not a good business practice anyway to do that but um but i would just tell you with someone like that i would just really try to be transparent with them up front before they close in the house before they move in make sure they understand the warranty process and if you don't yes. have a system if you don't have a warranty system or a process in place i would highly encourage you to put that in place so that it's very so everything's real real black and white when they close of how that process works and then when, and then that way, whenever someone is being like what, what you're describing, you can, you have the ability to say, you know, we, hey, it, you know, we, we, you know, we went through this, this is kind of the process. We talked about those things that were covered previously. And you just have to be able to say that forbidden word, no. And, 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 and you just have to, and, and feel good about that because you have already done the legwork up front 
and they are mm-hmm. they do know um, because there there's people out there that will try to take advantage of you at time advantage of you at times and so you just have to have that ability and it's not fun I'm terrible about doing it I'm terrible about telling people no because I want everybody to like me but um but you have to you you know you, you can't let somebody do that to you because they'll run you ragged but again I think it goes back to doing doing the doing the, the legwork up front because if you don't you will run into those situations and then nobody knows what the standards are nobody knows what the what to, the expectations are so uh what. if if i can jump back in a second john said something that triggered a deal with me that that i think what might be helpful for us and, and I, I i'm sure john does the same thing but we every home that we build spec custom whatever we put the structure home warranty on it, and this is not meant to be a plug by any means, but whether it's structure or another brand, uh, that home warranty uh, does a lot of validating that, like John said, uh, helps with expectations uh, mm-hmm. that, you know, without that document in place, you know, that homeowner can feel like, well, you're just almost kind of making up what's warranty and what's not warranty. Right. And if you have a document like that in place, it gives you some guidelines that's from a third party that, uh, to me, helps manage that that situation. Yes. For sure. For sure. Do you guys have any closing remarks for today? If you don't, that's okay. Uh, Well, we really enjoyed it. We enjoyed it. I'm glad we got to talk to you to share what we have. And hopefully it was informative to people out there. And um, yeah, yeah. Anything? No. <laughs> uh, John just read my mind. Just thank you for uh, giving us this platform and opportunity. And hopefully, something as crazy as some of this stuff is, hopefully, something might have been beneficial in some way. Yeah. 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 It's been fun. Yeah. Well, we want to thank both couples, Deborah and Carlton Edwards and Lindsay and John McKinney for your time today and sharing your experiences with us, as well as Anderson Windows and Doors, our sponsor for today's session. We have not been able to bring this to you without their support. Um, Thank you for participating. And if anybody's interested in seeing this presentation or sharing it with someone else, it will be available on Tab's YouTube page. Thank you.